this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 upgrades, fixes, and gripes that you all had with our camper van. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello everyone. Hello, I'm Chico. I'm Moritz. We've been living in this camper van for four months and we want to go a bit over what worked out and what didn't work out so well. If you haven't seen our van tour, go check it out first so you can follow along with all of our upgrades and changes that we've made to our tiny home. The first fix we made was to our plumbing. This was a major flaw in the design. I started out with some PEX fittings and later on decided I want to use vinyl hose because it's so much easier to use. And well, you shouldn't mix PEX fittings and vinyl hose because at some point we turned on the pump and everything exploded like the hose got loose from the fittings and we had like water flushing into the truck. By now I have replaced those PEX fittings with the proper fittings for vinyl hose and it doesn't leak anymore. For now, we will see if, if there's new leaks eventually. Okay, fine, I haven't replaced everyone yet. There's still a mishmash of fittings, but the important ones have been replaced. These gray ones are the correct fittings for vinyl, but these brass ones are for PEX. We've tried to really keep the budget low, but after my plumbing experience, next time press fittings and that's it. No more fiddling with hose clamps. It's just such a pain. Get the press fittings and you'll be fine. We had trouble implementing drawer latches to hold our drawers in place as we were driving down bumpy roads. So Moritz came up with this really nifty idea, inserting keyholes into aluminum panels that would lock themselves on screws and so the screws are just attached to the top and the bottom of our drawers and they work like this so we had to create some kind of mechanism to hold the bottom of this panel in place so it's just a little loop and some screws to keep that Nothing fancy for the fridge, just some eye loops and some nylon rope and we just tied it like a lasso so you can just tighten it and then we just butterfly knot it and that keeps the fridge closed during travel. And Moritz literally came up with this solution for our PAX wardrobe last week and it's just a simple window lock. So. It works like this. And otherwise we just have a ball joint lock thingy to keep it in place. Especially helpful when we are slanted and parked slanted so things don't go open naturally. As if there's a ghost in here. The next upgrade is related to our battery management. In summer when it was super hot our fridge was running pretty much 24 7 and even though the sun was burning pretty hot we had a lot of uh, smoke from the wildfires so we weren't getting the full solar output that we expected. And I have all the battery data in this handy tablet and in the home automation so I added a little logic that would turn off the fridge once the battery falls below 20% and that way it preserves us from running the battery dead. Because we woke up I think two nights where we actually, uh, everything was dead in the morning, couldn't run pump, couldn't run anything. So with this little logic upgrade it turns off the fridge when the battery capacitance is low and we still have enough power to get at least some water. It is getting autumn by now and it is also getting pretty cold. So we do have a heater that is connected to our fuel tank, but it only works to about yeah, 1400 meters in elevation. And after that you need a special appliance or additional little sensor that helps this heater to adjust for the lower air pressure. And that's what we've been recently installing. We discovered this early on on the Ghost River Valley when we tried to start up the heater in the morning and yeah, it just wouldn't turn on. So with this fix we should be settled in for winter or autumn. If you're planning to 
camp out in high elevations and you have these types of heaters, check the manual if you need an additional yeah, air pressure kit or a high elevation kit so you can run it in high elevations. Since this is a brand heater from Evaspecha, it is fairly easy to find out which components you need and how to set them up. It really depends a bit on your brand how you would go about it. I am so glad that Moritz forced us to build a shower for our camper van. The composting toilet is actually working super well. There's nothing better than doing your own business in the comfort of your own home and not having to like run outside into the cold. Having a hot water shower has worked out super well. I can shampoo my hair twice and condition it using our shower and the capacity of water that we have, which is only like 90 liters um, and 10 liters of hot water. And I think what's made that work so well is the water temperature gauge that we've installed along with our plumbing system so that we don't have to keep tweaking the temperature. It just stays at a steady, supposed like 38 degrees Celsius. Sometimes it's a little bit colder, sometimes a little bit hotter, but then we don't have to worry about the temperature at all. The IKEA tiles that we put on the floor, we actually don't shower on top of it. What we're using the tiles for is to separate the composting toilet from the shower pan so that we can immediately put everything back into the shower after we're done so that we're not waiting for it to dry and are worried about moisture underneath the composting toilet. So this is not a hard upgrade, but maybe more like a soft upgrade. We stopped using pine shavings for our solids. So thank you everybody that recommended that we use peat moss because we just got a bag of peat moss and it has made a world of difference for the composting toilet. Not that it was that bad before, but this just like completely eliminates the smell. Our toolbox started to fall apart. So we got really lucky and found a new one at Kijiji and mounted in like three hours worth of parking lot tinkering. And I'm very happy with it. It's better than the old one. It's sealing well, it's closing well, and it has a proper lock. It is slightly more crammed in there because it's six inches shorter, but we made it work. One of my favorite improvements on our camper van is our little spice jars. We've created a whole spice rack with these labels that we got off Amazon, including matching spice jars. It was actually a little bit expensive, like $60 for the whole project, but it's made a world of enjoyment difference when it comes to us cooking. And I'm shouting at more to be like, hey, get me the turmeric and you're scrambling looking for the right thing. So I absolutely recommend figuring out your spices. And the last small, small thing, we got our paper towels up off the counter. Just some hookies, piece of rope. You can even do one-handed pull. <laughs> the number one gripe we had about our hamper van was our bed is way too small. And you know what? I am here to tell you that you are right. The bed is too small. We smash our elbows into it. We smash our knees into it. I have to roll up over Morris and wake him up every morning, which he is very annoyed about. But you know what? We wouldn't change it for a thing. It, I mean, we don't have to set up a bed at the end of the day. That is the best thing ever. Do I need to say more? <laughs> the second most popular gripe was our frame, which supposedly disintegrates when you're driving through dirt roads and we've driven a lot of dirt roads and it's still not disintegrated. So I think it's fine. Like you don't need to build super sturdy. Sure, build it as sturdy as you can and you should be good for your van life. How many kilometers have we traveled? Close, no, over 9,000 now. And how many miles is that? 6,000 miles. And how's our frame holding up? I think it's still holding. Now is a great time for us to share that we've been hooked on Bob Wells' classes about living on the road in an RV on Skillshare. We love how down to earth he is and how matter of fact his suggestions are. We wish we would have watched his class on stealth camping before we started living in our van. If you haven't explored Skillshare yet, it is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for you to discover lifelong learning. Skillshare is ad-free so you can focus on learning without distractions. They're always launching new premium classes as well. 
The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So how is it going? How is our floor going? The vinyl sheet is working out perfectly because it's not like the vinyl boards. It's nothing is buckling. So we would highly recommend you using vinyl sheets if that's an option. Unfortunately, when we built the strapping underneath the floor, we placed it in a cross hatch pattern and did not account for high traffic areas. So as you can see, I'm just gonna roll a lacrosse ball. We don't play lacrosse uh, over the floor. And you can see it's a little wavy in these areas because obviously we stand here most of the time. And funny enough, when I gave my 85 year old grandmother a tour of this place, she was like, why is your floor so bouncy and lumpy? <laughs> so she gave us um, a, a low star review on the floors. Unfortunately, we can't change it anymore, but if you are building your own camper van, highly recommend adding extra beams underneath all the high traffic areas. In fact, just do it all over the bottom of the van. And we also recommend using at least 0.75 inch to one inch thick plywood because we used 0.5 inch thick plywood. And I think that's also contributing to this like wavy effect that we're getting on the floor, so. Thank you so much for watching this video. Yeah, I hope you had a ton of fun seeing our little tweaks and upgrades that we have made uh, until now. I hope there was also some useful information for everybody on otherwise. Yeah, hopefully this inspires you even more to build your own camper van because there hasn't really been a problem that we've encountered that we couldn't solve no, it's, ourselves oh, or with the help of people. Doable. Yeah, so hopefully that motivates you to do it even more. It's really not that scary. So many people have done it before you and we're all rooting for you if we're, we've been on this journey before. And once again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 viewers. So click the link below, we'll get a one month free trial to Skillshare. All right. And that's it. Thank you for watching. We hope we see you on the road to pictures. Okay, see ya, bye.